the electron transport chain, the chemiosmotic theory of oxidative phosphorylation. As I go through this process, to yield adenosine triphosphates, I'll identify each one of these terms and what that really means. But first, the premise of the electron transport chain is the electron transport chain functions from a low reduction potential to a high reduction potential. The acceptor is the oxidant. NAD positive, the oxidized form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is an oxidant and it has reduction or reducing, it both mean the same thing, potential. It has reduction potential or reducing potential. The more positive, the more the reducing potential the oxidant has to reduce itself. The donor is the reductant. NADH is a donor and it has oxidant potential. The more negative, the more oxidant potential the reductant has to oxidize itself. Therefore, a reductant, the more negative oxidant potential becomes less negative. Oxidant, the more positive reducing potential becomes less positive. Therefore, the oxidized form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide to its reduced form is said to be reduced because, and this is what I was talking about earlier, is why is it when you gain electrons or gain hydrogens is it said to be reduced? Well, the reduction potential of the free energy has been reduced. Okay, so this is a graphical representation of the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is just a chain of protein complexes embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And as we take these electrons from the reduced form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide or the electrons from succinate as it passes through these protein complexes, it will yield a molecule of water as these electrons are, are transferred. So that's why it's called the electron transport chain. Now, let me identify this structure. This is the intermembrane space the inner mitochondrial membrane where these uh, protein complexes are embedded, and this is the matrix of the mitochondria. <clears throat> so this is complex one. It's, it's called NAD, NADHQ oxidoreductase. It's also referred to as NADH dehydrogenase. Complex two is succinate Q reductase, and it's also referred to as succinate dehydrogenase. Complex three is Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase, and sometimes you'll hear that referred to as cytochrome B C1 complex. Now complex four is cytochrome C oxidase, and complex five is ATP synthase. Now what we're gonna do is <clears throat> basically we're gonna follow two electrons from the reduced form NADH plus H through complex one to ubiquinone, complex three cytochrome C complex four, and then to build a molecule of water. So let's start with that. And the electrons passed from the reduced form will become of NADH plus H. The, this will become oxidized. And then the oxidized form of flavin mononucleotide, which is the isooxazine ring to be uh, a nucleotide, is mononucleotide, the isooxazine ring, the five carbon sugar and the phosphate, that is a mononucleotide. This is its oxidized form. So when it takes the two electrons from the reduced NADH plus H and passes those electrons to the oxidized form of the flavin mononucleotide, it will become reduced. And it takes these uh, hydrogens and electrons onto this nitrogen that loses its double bond, and this is where it becomes the reduced form of FMNH2. So the reduced form of FMNH2 will then pass those electrons to the iron sulfur center. And the iron sulfur center, basically iron acts as a, in its, its oxidized state, it's Fe3+, and it can become reduced as the oxidized form goes to Fe2+. And this is a iron sulfur center. These are the irons and the sulfurs. And again, it goes from its ferret to its ferrous state as it, becomes from oxidized to being reduced. So the electrons are passed from the NADH to FMN to the iron sulfur center and then to the ubiquinone. Now as these electrons pass through complex one, it is said to have undergone a conformational change where it will allow this complex to pick up these protons, these hydrogen ions, and pump them through this protein channel to the intermembrane space. 
So there, for, for these two electrons, for one NADH, the two electrons coming from there, complex one will promote four hydrogen ions to the intermembrane space. Now, this is a picture of ubiquinone. This is a quinone ring and a long isoprenal tail. And this is an, uh, one isoprenal unit, and there are 10 of these on ubiquinone. And this is its oxidized form, the reduced form. The hydrogens, the electrons, and the hydrogens will bond to this uh, double bonded oxygen, thereby reducing it to ubiquinone. It's QH2. Then these two electrons will pass through, and this long tail um, is hydrophobic and allows it to work through this uh, lipid bilayer of the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So it will, it will transfer, and this QH2 is mobile, whereas each of these complexes, one, two, three, and four, are stationary. Now, Q, uh, ubiquinone and cytochrome C are mobile. Uh, ubiquinone transports the electrons within this lipid bilayer to cytochrome B. And let's see how it does that. It will transport it to cytochrome B, and this is at cytochrome B. It is a heme molecule, the same as hemoglobin and myoglobin. And if you notice up top, it has double bonded carbons. And so the, as these electrons will be passed from the initial oxidized form of cytochrome B, then these electrons will reduce that. And then we'll pass those electrons to the oxidized iron sulfur uh, center to its, from its ferric oxidized form to ferrous state iron. And then it will pass those electrons to cytochrome C1. And this is a picture of cytochrome C1. As you notice, the double bonded uh, carbons are now have a, a sulfur molecule there. And this has more reduction potential than the iron sulfur center had. So it will gain the electrons to the cytochrome C1. And this is also the same as the cytochrome C. So these electrons will be transported through this complex three, and as it does this, it, it changes the conformation of this uh, protein complex where it will transport four hydrogen ions into the membrane space from the matrix. So it will deposit the two electrons uh, to the complex four as it is passed from cytochrome C1 to cytochrome C, and <clears throat> this is on the outer side of the inner membrane, and it transports those to complex four. Those two electrons will be deposited to the, a copper uh, molecule in complex four from its oxidized form to where it is reduced, and then it will pass those electrons to the oxidized form of cytochrome A. And this is cytochrome A. It's a little different from the cytochrome B and cytochrome C. This is cytochrome A where it has this long isoprenal tail, and the electrons will then reduce this cytochrome A, and then it will pass those electrons to this bimetallic cytochrome A3 to a copper B. They're kind of both joined together. It will pass those electrons down to here, and then those two electrons will bind with one of the oxygen units. This is half of a diatomic oxygen, O2, and so therefore half of this is one oxygen. Those two electrons will bind with that one oxygen. And as those electrons passed through complex four, again, it did a conformational change and allowed two hydrogen ions to go into the intermembrane space. And then the other two hydrogen ions will come down here, bind with the oxygen, the two electrons, with the two hydrogens to promote a molecule of water. Now that is from at the reduced form of NADH plus H. <clears throat> now from succinate, a, an intermediate in the tricarboxylic acid cycle, it would become oxidized to fumarate. This is succinate, and as we lose two of these electrons and two hydrogens, it will be converted to fumarate. Those two electrons will be accepted by the oxidized form of flavin adenine dinucleotide to its reduced form. This is the uh, flavin adenine dinucleotide. Here is the isoaloxazine ring, the five carbon sugar, its phosphate, and another nucleotide, the adenine nitrogenous base, its five carbon sugar ribose, and another phosphate. So this is the oxidized form, and 
the succinate will transfer those two electrons to this oxidized form where the nitrogens will pick up those hydrogens again, becoming its uh, reduced form of flavin adenine dinucleotide, H2. And those electrons then will be passed to the iron sulfur center. This complex two has four subunits, succinate dehydrogenase A, B, C, and D. So the electrons will then be passed through here to ubiquinone again. And then from ubiquinone, it will be passed as it did with the reduced form of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. It will be passed from ubiquinone to complex three, to the cytochrome C, to the complex four, and then to promote another molecule of water. So here we go with the two electrons will be transported to the ubiquinone. And then the, this is the reduced form of the flavin adenine uh, dinucleotide. So let's focus our attention now on the ATP synthase. These hydrogen ions, there are, for every one, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide uh, in its reduced form will promote 10 hydrogen ions into the intermembrane space. And this creates a pH gradient and also an electrochemical gradient, uh, promoting a potential energy. So that potential energy, and this is the, as we transfer these electrons through and we pump these hydrogen ions across, that is the chemiosmotic theory. Now we have a, a, an energy potential up here where we can transfer these electrons through the ATP synthase to promote a, an adenosine triphosphate. Now, ATP synthase, this complex is the head of it is F0, and this is a, this will rotate to where as when these hydrogen ions come through, it will cause this to rotate, and this is like an electrical generator. It will cause uh, an energy to, as this uh, gamma stock will help this F1 complex undergo a conformational change where it will accept the adenosine diphosphate and a phosphate on complex B, the subunit of F1, to convert it to an adenosine triphosphate. So for every three hydrogen ions that go through, excuse me, the ATP synthase, it will yield one adenosine triphosphate. So as we go through this matrix space, excuse me, and it creates a conformational change through this F1, thereby allowing the adenosine tri uh, diphosphate and another phosphate to bind to the beta subunit, creating an adenosine triphosphate. Now, this is the oxidation phosphorylation. Um, the oxidation is where each one of these um, protein complexes become oxidated, thereby creating a, an adenosine triphosphate, the phosphorylation, oxidation phosphorylation. So for every one nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide in its reduced form, that will yield 10 hydrogen ions. And for every uh, succinate that is oxidized, that will yield six hydrogen ions because it doesn't go through complex one, it goes to ubiquinone, complex three, C, complex four. And so you get four hydrogen ions pumped through complex three and two pumped through complex four. Now, that is why the NADH plus plus H will yield three ATPs, whereas a, the flavin adenine dinucleotide will only yield two ATPs because it has four plus two is six hydrogen ions.